kick off the student presentations as the team from CEG. I'm Maya Yildrum from Washington University in St. Louis, and I'm a student studying architecture. Hi everyone, my name is Dominique Vigtorovsky. I'm an architecture student from New Jersey Institute of Technology. Hi everyone, my name is Paul Acuna. I'm a civil engineering student at North Carolina State University. All right, to start off this project, we started with a site visit to Franklinton, Ohio, and this served as an inspiration for the design of our project um, throughout the entire process, actually. We wanted to celebrate the community of Franklinton through our exciting designs, and we hope that today we can prove to you how exactly we did that. So the concept design for this project is that of a uh, folded in. That is the driving concept for this. Folding in new architectural elements to an existing historical framework, folding in a new structure to a building that is already there, folding in the new needs of the community to a, a, a site that has already been a core to this community before. So using that as the basis for our design, we have also worked with these folded panels that are continuous and represent the continuity of the Franklinton community, as well as these angular forms that show a departure from the past. We also try to draw from the Franklinton community in a ver various different ways, including materiality, which is where precast concrete comes in. Because of the nature of precast concrete, a bunch of different uh, possibilities are available to us, both in texture and color, and we try to draw from the history of Franklinton and represent that in our designs later, which we will show you, um, by using precast con concrete. And then in this next slide, we'll take a look at that site. Uh, we are located, as I mentioned, in the Franklinton neighborhood, and on that northern part of the street, let's point to that, oops, maybe not, northern part of the street is broad and our project is going to have the a parking center uh, built across that part of it and then down on the southward part is glenwood the community center part of our project will be along that street at the heart of this project though is an existing building that we are going to continue to build off of in fact our structure is folded out of this existing building because we don't want to get rid of what's already there, we want to celebrate it. So we hope we can prove to you just how we do that. Overall, our project is, is separated into five different design parts. The first one being the design phase, moving on to construction documentation, then casting, construction itself, and finally, the finishes. Overall, this project will take about eight and a half months. Sustainability is a big conversation in our world today. Our project decides to tackle these, um, this big topic in many different design features, such as a green roof, which aids in stormwater management, flexible spaces, such as our green roof, um, to provide endless opportunities for community engagement all throughout the year, such as in summertime, an open air farmer's market, or in the wintertime, an open air ice rink. We have bike storage in the garage as well, to provide a healthy lifestyle and encourage sustainable transportation. We chose precast concrete because of its features in the sustainability department, such as being able to use a reusable mold to cut down on the waste production, as well as expedite our construction time. We also like to add admixtures to our concrete mixes to create a durable design for years to come. The translucent concrete in our spaces, such as the library that we will get into later, provide a comfortable diffused lighting throughout the space. Our solar panels also provide el renewable electricity to, um, sorry, to power our EV spaces in the garage. Okay, so as you can see, um, this is a very interesting and nice building but it's also a very challenging task to undertake from a structural perspective. Here you can see some of the walls that are uh, into the building. So we're gonna use these walls to support not only the gravity loads, but also the lateral loads that are gonna be acting on the structure. We will also have double T's that are gonna compose the flooring system of our structure. These are gonna be 12 feet wide and three inches high, which is pretty typical for these dimensions. 
we're gonna have a wall that's gonna run through the middle of the structure and that's gonna help us uh, to shorten the length of the span that was initially 120 feet. Now it's 60 feet long and that's uh, more typical for this cross section. If we move farther up, we have the same load burden system until we get to the roof that we can see that's inclined and that's uh, the most unique part of this structure and also the most challenging one. So uh, the walls in the edges were extended and then we'll, uh, we're gonna have a steel bracing system to help this come true. These are the different cross sections that we're gonna use. As I said, we have double T's. Uh, we also have these wall panels that are 12 inches wide and 35, uh, sorry, 12 feet wide and 35 feet tall. Um, the double T's that are gonna be in the first floor are gonna help to prevent any potential buckling instability uh, on, on these uh, structural walls. We will also have columns that are gonna be two feet square, uh, and this is basically gonna help us uh, to distribute our loads. Uh, if you see in the bottom right corner, we also uh, have this change in the distribution, and that is because uh, we're gonna have a translucent concrete in that area, so we need to have a beam column frame type connection that's more conventional. In terms of materials, we're gonna use high strength steel strands that are gonna be a low relaxation with an ultimate load of 270 KSI. We're gonna have mild reinforcement steel with a yield of strength of 60 KSI and self-consolidating con uh, concrete that uh, must have a strength higher than 5,000 PSI. The load that's gonna be uh, controlling here is gonna be provided by a uh, wind load expected in the area because uh, we're gonna have an area that's gonna serve as a tornado shelter. So uh, around this area, our walls are gonna be thicker, and uh, on top of that, we're also gonna have a light load of 100 PSI, because on the second floor, we're gonna have a restaurant and a dining area. Here you also can uh, see the load combinations that we're gonna use, uh, and even though the sections might change, uh, primarily based on serviceability issues, uh, the structural considerations that we presented so far should help uh, the Franklinton community uh, to have not only uh, an, a spectacular building, but also a safe, durable, and sustainable complex. Moving on to the plans of our building, in the bottom left-hand corner on your screen is the ground floor plan. Starting with the parking deck that we mentioned earlier off of Broad Street, um, it holds our EV chargers and our bicycle storage. Connected to this is our homeless hygiene shelter, where individuals can come and access spaces such as clean bathrooms and showers, a food kitchen, a laundry area, and a place to sit down and relax. In, in addition to this, we also have office spaces where these individuals can go in case they need help. Moving to the southern side of our building, we have our more recreational spaces such as our basketball court, which we mentioned earlier, our gym, our yoga spaces, and also on the southernmost part, a library and a learning space as well. Our second floor above houses the most primary space of our concept, and that's the flexible roof space area. So in the summertime, as I mentioned earlier, we can house different activities as well as in the winter time. Connected to this, we have a garden and a greenhouse which can house vegetables and fruits, which can be used in the restaurant we see to the right-hand side. As well, in the right-hand side, on the southern part, we have a banquet hall, which can be rented out for private events. All right, and now in this section, we see that there are a variety of different spaces, all at different sizes, and this is because we wanted to create, like, a, a, a place that is flexible. We know that concrete is long-lasting, so the changing needs of the community are going to cause us to use this space in changing ways. So flexibility was a driver in creating this section. In order to explain those long spans, though, we do have a few uh, details called out. So in the first one, we have uh, this component that goes between the floor and the wall, and that is what is supporting the double T's. Uh, it is the slotted insert system. 
In the second detail, uh, the Corval is what is also supporting the double T system, um, and the DAPT uh, beam is um, able to decrease the depth of the floor. And then in the final detail, which uh, is not actually pointed out in this section because it would not be viewed from this section, um, we have the vector shear connectors. And these are what are able to hold um, the panels of the precast concrete together in order to allow for a proper alignment. And these are provided by JVI. Now we can look into this space. So first, the library view shows how the translucent concrete is able to create a comfortable atmosphere, which is going to bring in like neighborhood children and people who are wanting a calm environment for learning. So we are using different amounts of natural light in these different spaces in order to influence the program that is possible in them. So the atmosphere here would be conducive to learning and calm. And then when we look at the corner of Glendale and Broad, we see this existing structure that a lot of our inspiration is coming from. Um, this existing structure has brick as a material. Of course, we are using precast concrete, but in order to incorporate it both through color and texture, we will be using these th thin bricks uh, embedded into the precast concrete provided by Endicott Clay Products. And this is what ties the history of the site to what is coming up for this site in Franklinton. So we draw the past and the present and the future together. Also, these two structures are tied together through their green um, rooftop. Um, this allows for the community to have a new space that isn't within the structure, but without the structure. So there's a lounge area and a garden space, and all of this is accessible um, and ADA approved. So it's really a, a way of bringing the community together in ways that we didn't see possible when we visited the site, and ways that we thought would be best in order to celebrate what is already there. So with that, we would like to thank all of you for listening to our presentation today. We would like to thank also the Franklinton community for letting us go and draw inspiration from them. It has been really crucial to our designs and we hope that we were able to celebrate them. Um, and we hope that the PCI was maybe able to uh, gain some inspiration from this as well. Thank you so much for your time. Um, if you have any questions, find the pink team, CEG, uh, out on the floor at some point. Thank you.